space in here is getting to be a bit of a, a bit of a prime. Is that, is that a way that you can say that? I think it, space is becoming prime real estate in here. The silver bike needs a little maintenance too. But that's not what today is about. Today is about this bike behind me. This is my friend Zach's bike. Uh, this was Zach's old commuter that he was using for the longest time. He gave up on it when he got his rally Willard. Um, he eventually got the bike back, but it came back to him in a less than stellar way, we'll say. The bike didn't actually get ridden, but where it lived for the longest time, it, it really suffered quite a bit. It sat inside, but in a very humid room at the brewery that he works at. And, uh, well, it kind of did a number on all of the exposed, non-painted metal parts of the bike. Like the chain being uh, relatively rusty, you know, all these parts here kind of just got the crap beaten right out of them. Along with, oddly enough, uh, without it being ridden, spoke broke. And you can probably see that that's uh, not working so great. So, because it sat in a room the way it did, the, uh, the nipples on the spokes don't really want to turn. Um, so what I'm going to do with it at the shop today is just probably give it a full rebuild and uh, bring it back here tonight and, and finish the rest of the bike. It's funny because I think Zach uh, ultimately is probably a better mechanic than I am, but he just didn't want to take something like this on. And he was just like, hey, want to uh, wanna fix my, my old sort of weird internal gear coaster brake commuter? And I, of course, said yes. a ton the last few days. I'm not entirely sure why, but it's definitely interesting the difference in the geometries between the crux and the tri-cross. This thing feels like it steers way slower at higher speeds. The difference in geometry is very weird for the first like 10 minutes of a ride, and then you just get used to it. Hopefully this wheel decides to stay with me for the ride and not go for its own ride. It's funny that I'm making a video about how my friend's bike got ruined by sitting around for too long, only to realize that my bikes that have been sitting around for too long are relatively ruined. those of you with a keen eye, you might have noticed this cap in the intro of this video. They're coming along. This is definitely one of the best ones, but uh, still some work to be done. The shop is still open and I still do work here, but, but I, won't, I won't be bringing the camera in. Uh, just know that at the end of today, this wheel will be rebuilt and I'll be finishing off Zach's bike in my basement. And hopefully all this noise goes away. This wheel is now rebuilt, super strong, uh, albeit it does have black spokes. Hopefully you're okay with that, Zach. That's all I had. You hear that loud, noisy water heater? Well, all things considered, when it comes to this wheel, and for how damaged it was, I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. It actually came out really, really round, and as true as I would hope that a, a very beat up, Mavic Open Sport would. The tensions around this wheel aren't all perfect. I'm definitely not afraid to admit that when you use uh, when you use beat up and old parts, uh, it's not going to turn out 
completely perfect, but uh, the trueness and the roundness of it uh, turned out very, very good. Ab above my expectation, really. Um, the black spokes look good, the silver rim looks good, uh, and actually this cog came out significantly cleaner and better than I thought it was going to. Um, before I get to work on all that, uh, I do need to take the dog out for, you know, his like border collie exit of energy. Some of you might call that a run. Now, believe me, I know this isn't the coolest of bikes. It's actually nowhere near the coolest frame set or complete bike that's been featured on this channel ever. There's nothing about it that really speaks to me. It doesn't really say anything along the lines of, hey, that's a, that's a super cool bike that I would love to own. But that's okay because that's not really the point that I'm trying to drive home by doing this portion of this video. It just so happens that this is the bike that I have that needs this kind of work and this kind of love and maintenance. What I'm really trying to get at here and what I'm really trying to show you, especially a lot of you new riders or new people who are trying to get in to doing your own kind of mechanic stuff, is how easy and simple it can be as the first steps towards getting your bike feeling significantly better. If you've bought a used bike or if you've got a bike that you've been riding for a really long time that you've kind of done nothing with and sort of neglected. The first few steps to get comfortable with working on a bike and learning how to work on a bike are really simple and they kind of include what I'm doing right now uh, beyond the fact that I completely rebuilt a rear wheel. And ultimately I'm just gonna end up driving the same point home that pretty much every bicycling channel does. And that's the fact that a clean bike, like a deep washed, insanely clean bike, works so much better than a filthy bike every single day of the week 24 7. So if you take away anything from this nonsense video that I've just made, it's the fact that you need to get incredibly comfortable with these like simple removal of parts. This is a this is a hundred percent one of those moments where I wish I had the uh, the bolt cutters. Thankfully, it's a uh, it's a wet floor basement down here, and, uh, and Angela's not home, so I can only get in trouble for this after making a big mess in here, and not while I'm making a big mess in here. Now obviously this would have made uh, a lot more sense to just do outside like I've done in previous videos at the house uh, using a hose and like the same sponge and dish soap method that I, that I always do. But I find that when I show videos of like the work I do at the shop, I feel like it might be sort of like intimidating for those of you who are just sort of afraid to clean a bike. So I wanted to do it in here like it was a shop setting so you can understand that it's not the bike shop that makes the difference. It has nothing to do with the fact that I'm in a bike store so I can clean a bike really well. But this is the crappy basement of my house using the crappy tools that I have at home. Nothing from the bike shop was used here. Incredibly hot water and dish soap is all I use to wash this bike down. This bottle that you were seeing me use, this is just hot water that I used to rinse off the rest of the soap as I was drying it off with the towel that I'm using to dry the floor right now. It kind of shows how much better shape a bike is actually in. And after a deep clean like this, you can kind of check stuff like the headset. The headset on this feels awesome. The crank set is totally fine. There's, there's like a few spots on this where I'm like, yeah, maybe I'd like to clean off a little bit more of the rest. But that's all easy stuff. That's not stuff that is bike specific. That's just taking an SOS pad or maybe some emery paper and just rubbing off the rust on components that are basically just placeholders on the bike. Now it's it's getting a little bit late and I think I'm starting to talk a little bit of nonsense here. Uh, I'm gonna finish this. There's not really anything to see here. 
I really just wanted to use it as a vehicle to, to try and get some of you beginner mechanics or beginner bike riders who are a little intimidated about working on your own bike to get excited about doing it. Easily the best way to get to know your way around a bike is to really do some, some deep cleans of them and just getting comfortable in pulling some of the simple stuff off, maybe graduating to buying some tools to like pull a crank off so you can get into that bottom bracket area a little easier. Just small, small steps each time when you want to do better, better cleaning that will, uh, that will help you get to a point where you can just start feeling comfortable building a bike from scratch. Or I guarantee you there's somewhere in your city that's doing like a mechanic night of sorts. I would go as far as to say that wherever you are, there's someone there teaching you the, the simple stuff about working on a bike like I just did today. All right, back to uh, nonsensical bicycling stuff tomorrow.